just watch the bloody shows. Welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst games based on anime. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're showing off some of the worst games based on our favorite anime shows. Prepare for a Kamehameha of disappointment. Number 10, Attack on Titan, Humanity in Chains. <laughs> Despite its resounding success in television and manga, the Attack on Titan franchise had a rocky start in video games. For what few titles it's spawned so far, the worst is without a doubt Attack on Titan Humanity in Chains. On top of the incredibly repetitive missions, critics and fans agreed that Humanity in Chains had missed what makes Attack on Titan so exciting. Instead of fast-paced action, players had to go through quick-time events which could kill titans in only a couple of hits, so nothing felt intense, causing people to get tired of the game very quickly. Needless to say, you're better off playing one of Koei Tecmo's Attack on Titan games instead. Number 9, One Piece Pirates Carnival. The One Piece franchise has spawned some solid video games in the past decade or so. One Piece Pirates Carnival was not one of those games. At the start of a new game, you'll quickly feel the fatigue set in from the lifeless presentation of moving PNG files and astoundingly basic environments. For the rest of the game, you'll be assaulted with some of the blandest minigames imaginable. Seriously, we didn't think you could dumb down a minigame collection any further than something like Mario Party, but One Piece Pirates Carnival proved us wrong. Let's meet again, you lovesick charmer. Habibi, I love you. Number 8, Zatch Bell, Mamodo Fury. <laughs> Zatch Bell Mamoto Fury should have been a great game. Packed with a variety of game modes and a hearty roster of playable characters, Mamoto Fury had potential to be yet another terrific multiplayer game for the Nintendo GameCube and PlayStation 2. What decimated all hopes of accomplishing this was the gameplay itself. Between the shoddy camera, terrible controls, and broken gameplay, you'll become so frustrated that the thyroids in your neck will show. Regardless of if you like the anime or manga, this isn't worth anyone's time. <laughs> Number 7, Eureka 7, Volume 2, The New Vision. When Eureka 7 Volume 1 The New Wave released, fans were more than irritated with the mouthful of a title. The game lacked the same energy and excitement from the TV series. Surely they could fix all of these problems in the sequel, right? We couldn't be more wrong. Somehow the sequel was far worse than its predecessor. Eureka 7 Volume 2 The New Vision was another mouthful of a title that sucked even more life out of its source material, turning the game into a total snooze fest. Couple the lifeless presentation with terrible writing and uneven pacing, and you can guarantee no one was asking for a Volume 3. We can't pick up where we left off. Hey, wait. I got it. Yeah, I definitely remember. Number 6, Yu-Gi-Oh! Destiny Board Traveler What? What even is this? Why did we need a Yu-Gi-Oh! party game? Yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! Destiny Board Traveler is a party game for the Game Boy Advance, and it's one of the worst games you can get on the handheld. Players move around on a board, rolling the die and collecting victory stars from duels. This should sound somewhat enjoyable, but you'll quickly become frustrated with how reliant on luck the game truly is. 
It doesn't help the fact that every board has exactly the same layout, which makes the whole experience feel extremely tedious. And with that, we send Destiny Board Traveler to the Shadow Realm. Number 5, Yu Yu Hakusho, Spirit Detective. The Game Boy Advance boasted many wonderful adventure games when it was around. As you might expect, there were many games that simply couldn't replicate that success. For example, Yu Yu Hakusho Spirit Detective suffered severely from its level design and combat, components that are crucial in an action-adventure game such as this. Players could easily get lost in levels unless they religiously checked the compass every second. Enemies were total pushovers too, easily defeated with basic punches. And for anyone to make sense of the story, you would have had to have been a hardcore fan of the show, shutting out any newcomers. In the end, who was this game really for? Number 4, Beyblade V-Force Super Tournament Battle. Yeah! Who's the winner? Oh hey, they made a game of spinning tops. I mean, hey, look, it's Beyblade. If you're looking for a game where stuff just happens with no rhyme or reason, Beyblade V4 Super Tournament Battle isn't just an awful name, but it's one of the most chaotic and confusing games out there. And that's saying something for a game where you only move and occasionally summon a beast. When stripped of its bones, it's nothing more than a boring game of virtual tops knockabouts. They couldn't even do anything interesting with the graphics, huh? Yeah! What a great lawn! Come on! This is a Number 3, Naruto Shippuden, Dragon Blade Chronicles. That barrier must be brought down for us to reach him. But we can't do that now. Naruto has seen a healthy amount of success with the Ninja Storm games, among other titles. Unfortunately, when we sat down to play Naruto Shippuden Dragon Blade Chronicles, we couldn't believe it. This was one of the most fatiguing hack and slash games ever. Levels were straightforward, lacking any real design or room for exploration. Enemies were consistently being reused, making the game a breeze to blast through. Oh, and lest we forget the occasional frame dips and lagging. If there's anything we learned, it's that Dragon Blade Chronicles desperately needed a lesson in Patch Itsu. <laughs> Number 2 Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire. It's no good. Retreat. The anticipation for a new Mobile Suit Gundam game should be exciting until the very end. Besides, this is a franchise built around kick-ass robots with guns, rockets, and beam sabers. So how is it that a game like Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire manages to make the series so dreadfully boring to experience? Well, for starters, look at all that saturated brown. Seriously, where's the color in this game? To add to the dull visuals, none of your actions feel satisfying to pull off. It feels like you're just running around and watching graphics happen. Seeing as how this was a PS3 launch title, we can only assume this was supposed to be a tech demo. Number 1 Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22 This was even more disappointing than Yamcha. No, you didn't miss 21 other Dragon Ball games. Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22 is titled that way because of its 22 character roster. And that's all it's good for. As for everything else, the game is trash with broken controls and awful animation. What makes everything more frustrating is when you consider all the good fighting games that came before it, like Tekken and Street Fighter 2. It makes you really wonder where the effort put into this game went to. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.